I'm going to keep this nice and brief because I think the idea of this was to try and get as much audience participation towards the end as we possibly can. I'm certainly a little bit out of my comfort zone here, being more of a production expert than a marketing or a selling expert. Uh, although I have taken a, a slightly keener interest in it in recent years, having lost a small fortune with Dairy Farms of Britain. Um, I think I got the title slightly wrong, Neil, as well. We're not moving on. Why aren't we moving on here? Ah, there we go. So what's gone wrong, really? Uh, how on earth could we see bottled water being marketed uh, more successfully, more valuably than what is essentially nature's perfect food? How on earth have we let this happen as an industry, really? Well, I know these are just really simple observations, but I think, I think there's three main issues here. There's marketing, economics, uh, and education. So we'll go through these in turn. Well, we don't really market our milk, or at least we don't appear to have been very successful at marketing our milk. Um, we probably all remember back to the 1980s, milk has got a lot of bottle. Uh, you know, that was a, a catchphrase that stuck with us for a long time. Reasonably successful, but that's an awful long time ago. There's been precious little done since. I think the last one I remember was Make Mine Milk, where we had a load of celebrities with white moustaches. Uh, and it seemed to be reasonably successful, but fairly short-lived. Um, for various reasons, we just don't seem to be particularly good at it. I tried desperately hard to get some funding for a leader project up in Cumbria to develop a local and fair brand a few years ago. Uh, the immense amount of paperwork I had to go through just to get the feasibility study done to see whether I should apply for funding. Basically, that we tried twice and fell up the hurdle, the same hurdle twice. Um, well, major, hang on, I should have major lacking in brand identity. I think this is where, where Neil's uh, idea has certainly got legs. You know, we, we don't differentiate between types of milk, anything like uh, as much as we could. We've, um, there's almost three times the opportunity to buy water in a supermarket in terms of brand than there is uh, uh, milk, basically. That's every type of water from uh, sparkling, still, slightly, you know, um, fruit, fruit flavors added to it. Uh, and, and that covers all, all the milks as well. So that's three times the opportunity to buy water than, than milk. I mean, that's just bizarre. Water is retailing from about 13 pence a litre to about three pounds a litre. Milk's retailing from, well, I've got 43 pence here, but it's actually less now, three, per litre to about 115 a litre. So there's a huge amount of opportunity there for, for a tremendous product. We seem to be very defensive or on the back foot, uh, having to sort of protect this food, often seen as, and not largely our own fault, but often seen as a high fat product. You see milk um, on the bottle, of, on the side of, of full, uh, full fat milk, you know, three and a half percent. How is that ever full of fat? You know, we don't see pies, we don't see sausages marketed as, as being full fat or half fat whereas they've got considerably more fat in than dairy products, but you don't see that mentioned at all in the marketing, so why on earth milk has to be marketed as full fat? It's just beyond me. Um, we've got a very fragmented producer base now since deregulation. The whole dairy industry is, is very fragmented. We don't particularly seem to use our combined strength particularly well. Uh, we often hear you know, comments from dairy farmers, is it, is it not Dairy Co's job this, promote, promoting dairy products? Uh, you know, Dairy, Dairy Co. raises a, a reasonable amount of money from the industry, but it, it sort of pales into insignificance when you talk about food, food marketing and promotion. So, you know, there's just not enough money there to do this. Which moves me on to economics, um, an industry that's actually worth £3.26 billion. Pounds. Why on earth have we not got any money there to market the produce? So where's all the money gone? You know, we've got, we've got increasingly slim producer margins, uh, or probably non-existent at the moment, very slim processor margins. The retailers seem to be particularly good at protecting their own margins. But we've got little money there left for product innovation. Uh, you know, there's, there's practically nothing happening there. And, uh, you know, we've got a tremendous product and there should be something happening there. Why on earth are we short of money? I mean, I, it's, it, we've had milk quotas for 30 years and I was sort of working out really how much potentially, I'm not sure how accurate my figures are, but there's something like 12 billion litres of milk quota changed hands within the industry in the last uh, 30 years. 
Uh, that ranges in value from practically nothing at the moment to upwards of a pound a litre back in the sort of late 80s, early 90s. So I would imagine somewhere between three and six billion pounds effectively exited the dairy industry at some point in the last 30 years. Well, you know, that would have done an awful lot of product innovation, an awful lot of promotion. And it's not just that that money's left the industry. We're actually, the, you know, the producers that are left are actually saddled with that debt now. And that's probably about 300,000 pounds per producer left milking cows. So maybe it's maybe no surprise that there's no money there to do anything. And of course, you know, we set off with one big co-op, Milkmark, that was um, broken down into three. We're now down to two co-ops, or one and a half, or however you want to see the dairy industry. And the co-op's main priority, of course, is to stay in business. Um, you know, there's very little money there for them to do any other promotion. We've got nature's perfect product. Uh, but how often do we hear it shouted about, really? Um, like I said before, we're often on the back foot. We're not promoting the, uh, the health benefits of, of dairy uh, as well as we should. Strangely enough, um, sports nutrition, which largely depends upon whey powder, a byproduct of making cheese, is actually the fastest growing food category. And this is a byproduct of, of our raw material, if you like. You know, why on earth has it got to be a byproduct that, that feed? It might, it's a good thing, but we're, we're missing the messages with the, with the main product. I've already talked about full fat. This should be no surprise to you all. I'm not going to read through these. You can, you can look at these. This is what uh, a glass full of milk provides you with. How often do we hear about this? Water can't compete, surely, can it? So in summary, we've got nature's perfect food. Uh, you know, we should be the envy of the food industry, really. Um, but even a food of the quality of milk needs continually promoted. We've got a new consumer coming on stream all the time. We've got to keep on educating these consumers. A highly trusted supply chain actually setting global standards now in food chain sustainability and, and, and integrity. Um, so, you know, in my conclusion, water's not worth, the milk, uh, worth more than milk. We're just very poor at marketing milk. Thank you.